Lax. They're the ones from Wizards vs. Aliens that eat worlds. Pretty uh, horrible things that even people in their right minds wouldn't want to find. A grass lax. You're on your own. I've got to check on them there foxes. Oh, thanks, mate! Oh, great. Even the professionals won't deal with this. I'm getting on my desk. <laughs> this hasn't really solved anything, has it? What are you doing? Here's Horrible History Gory Games. <laughs> oh, it's just some fluff. Hello and welcome to Gory Games with me, Dave Lamb, and my assistant, Rattus Rattus. And not forgetting my assistant, Terry the Tapeworm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it, Terry. That tickles. It tickles. <laughs> this is the show where you get to test your knowledge of horrible histories with quirky quiz questions and gory games. So, before we learn any more about Rattus's insides... <laughs> it's a tickly little worm. <laughs> let's meet our horrible historians. Hi, my name's Mia. Hi, my name's Lucas. Hi, my name's Emily. Brilliant. Lovely to see you all. All present and correct. Dave. What? Dave. What? Dave. Mm. Before we start the show proper, I've come up with a little ancient Egyptian warm-up game. Our contestants are going to race each other in a house-building contest using that most common of all Egyptian building materials, bricks made out of dried animal poop. Grab a brick, we're off in three, two, no, one. No, 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 we're not. This is a health and safety nightmare. You can't let children handle these bricks if they're really made from... For heaven's sake. Whoops. I'm going to need a clean shirt. Right, Mia, Lucas, Emily, you are playing to win Year Spheres. Each Year Sphere contains a historical date, and at the end of the show, your Year Sphere dates will be added up, with AD dates being added to your total and BC dates being subtracted from it. So, if these were your Year Spheres, your total would be, Rattus? Hmm? Oh, a million! <sighs> 735. Oh, I thought we were rounding up to the nearest million. No, we're not. At the end of the show, the person with the highest year score will win a truly unique historical prize. And it's something I've picked out myself, so you won't be disappointed. Though for legal reasons, I have to tell you that you may, in fact, be disappointed. <laughs> right, let's get cracking, and to find out what this round's about, it's over to the gory grid. Arr, the putrid pirates it be. Your four pirate topics are... Disguises, Blackbeard, Treasure and Sugar. Mia, you get to choose first in this round. What will it be? Disguises. Disguises. True or false, some pirates attacked merchant ships by disguising themselves as women. Is that true or false? Let's see your answers now, please. Right, Mia and Lucas going for true, Emily going for false. Let's hear what the actual answer is. It's true! <laughs> yeah. It was a good way to lure the merchant ship in by pretending to be ladies in distress. Oh, help me, sir, please help me. I'm a lady in distress. <laughs> yeah, I need to work on a voice a little bit. Just a little bit, I think, yes. Lucas, it's your turn to pick a topic, so pick away. I'm going to go with Blackbeard. Blackbeard. Tis I, Blackbeard the pirate. Here be my question. True or false? If I was robbing passengers of their rings and couldn't get a ring off their finger, I'd chop off their whole finger. All going for true. Well, let's see if you're all right or all wrong. It's true. Yes, and he'd chop off their whole hand if they had more than one ring. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> and if the rat thinks it's horrible, then it's really horrible. Emily, your turn to choose a topic. Uh, sugar. That is a prop question. Ooh, prop question, <laughs> prop question. It's a bag of sugar. True or false, in the 1700s, there was so much sugar, it was quite worthless. They've all gone for false. You're absolutely right. Sugar was one of the most precious things around in the 1700s, so well done. The question remaining in this round is on treasure. True or false? When us pirates buried treasure, we would sometimes murder a prisoner and bury him on top of the treasure. 
OK, all three of you agreeing on false. Let's find out what the actual answer is. It's true! <laughs> yeah. That way, if someone tried to dig up the treasure, they'd find the skeleton and think it was just a grave. <laughs> it worked every time. And that is the end of the round. So, Emily, just for now, your history, I'm afraid. But you two, fingers on your buzzers, because we are going to have the tiebreaker question. Beginning with the letter S, in the famous pirate expression, what word went before me timbers? <laughs> Lucas. Shiver. Shiver me timbers is absolutely right. Time for you to choose your year sphere. Oh, eef, 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 eef. oh it's heavy when it's a full one. Lucas, come and collect your year sphere. You really don't want to get one with a Stone Age date inside, as that could mean a few million minus points. Ooh, nice one. Or maybe not. <laughs> oh, no, wait a minute, he's taken one off it. <clears throat> oh, that's much lighter. La, 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 la. <laughs> so, winning the quiz means that Lucas is automatically through to play the pirate game. But will he be alone or will everyone get to play? It's a single-player silly game waiting for you at the other end of that time sewer. You better get down there and find out what it is. Perhaps unsurprisingly, I'm rather keen on this next game. It's time to play whack a rat <sighs> And yet my Whack-A-Human game was considered to be in bad taste. Double standards or what? Tut! Pirate ships were infested with rats, disease-ridden and tapeworm-carrying. Boy, you leave Terry out of this. Well, and your job is to whack them. Whack 15 rats in the time limit to win the year sphere. Are you ready? Your time starts now. <laughs> so, Lucas begins whack a rat, and poor old Rattus Rattus in the commentary box just can't watch. <laughs> Don't punish yourself, Rattus. I'll deal with this one. Ah, oh, it's an excellent strike there from Lucas. He's off to a fine start. <laughs> I'm afraid to say, Ratters, he's rather enjoying himself out there. There's another one. Another one takes it on the bounce. Yeah. Oh, there was a cheeky one popping his head up there. And he wasn't looking. Oh, they're both there! And he didn't quite get over in time to strike. Oh, we got that one all right, though. Lovely little blow that was. Oh, Ratters, Ratters, it's a shame you can't watch this, because it's good fun. Oh, he's going to have a headache tomorrow. I fear that may be optimism. There's plenty of rats that aren't being bopped on the head. There's going to be thousands of them. This is just a little tiny selection who admittedly are being pretty badly beaten. But the majority are fine. Do you know what, Dave? It's actually quite funny if I just imagine they're cats. Yeah, you keep doing that, Rattus. 30 seconds remaining. And some of these rats are actually enjoying it. That one with the eye patch is certainly enjoying it. He's a cheeky little rat, that one. Oh! It's OK, Rattus. That was a glancing blow. He'll live. He may not be quite the same rat he was before, but he'll certainly live. As will Lucas, who needs just one more, and he's done it! He's done it! Oh, there's one after the buzzer there. That was gratuitous. But it doesn't detract from the fact that he's won. Well done. Help yourself to a year sphere. I'm afraid to say the downside is that Rattus is no longer speaking to you. Mm. <laughs> oh, come on, Rattus. No, oh, right. I guess it is the point of the game. Yeah. You've never whacked a rat in real life? No, but I'd like to try. Oh, that's ruined it. Sorry, Rattus. Of course, rat hunts weren't the only way that pirates tackled their rodent problems. Many crews had a ship's cat to catch the rats for them. <laughs> On to round two, then, and to find out what's up next, it's over to the gory grid. It's the gorgeous Georgians. Here are your all-important Georgian topics. Fashion, monkeys, Nelson and punishments. Lucas, it's your turn to pick first. What's it going to be? Monkeys. <laughs> monkeys. What was a Georgian powder monkey? A, a woman who wore too much makeup. B, a boy who carried gunpowder on ships. Or C, a circus monkey. Mia and Lucas agreeing with B. Emily on C. Let's find out who's right. The answer is B. A powder monkey was a boy who carried gunpowder on battleships. They could run fast and made smaller targets for the enemy. <laughs> Horrible, but true. Emily, it's your turn to pick a topic. Fashion. Fashion. In Georgian times, what was a macaroni? A, a travelling performer, B, a pasta salesman, or C, a man who wore makeup and tight clothes? Emily and Lucas agreeing on C, Mia out on her own on A. Let's see what the answer is. The answer is, of course, C, 
A macaroni was a thoroughly fashionable man who wore makeup and tight clothes. So points there for Emily and Lucas. Mia, it's your turn to choose a topic next. Punishments. Punishments. That is a prop question. Oh, prop question, prop question. There it is. It is a whip. For a serious crime on board a Georgian ship, you could be beaten by a nine-stranded whip called a what? Was it A, a cat of nine tails, B, a backstinger, or C, a nine aligner? Mia going with A, the other two of you agreeing on B. The answer is A, it is a cat of nine tails. Proving that when something is really evil, it's always got the letter C-A-T in it. I think that's just coincidence, personally. Mia and Lucas neck and neck with two points. Emily on one, but there's a question remaining, so all is still to play for. The final question this round is on Nelson. OK, here we go. Good luck. The dashing Lord Admiral Horatio Nelson was Britain's greatest naval hero. But what unusual disorder did this sailor suffer from? A. He was scared of water. B. He got horribly seasick. Or C. He was petrified of seagulls. Everybody completely in agreement. They're all going for B. Let's see if you're all right or all wrong. The answer is B. He used to get horribly seasick. There you go. You were all absolutely right. And I noticed that Mia and Lucas have once again tied. Bad luck, Emily. I'm sorry to say you're not involved in the buzz around this time. It's the tie-break question. Beginning with the letter F, which European country was ruled by Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte? France. France is the correct answer, Lucas. You've won yourself another year sphere. Go and collect it. Lucas, as the quiz winner, you're also through to play the Georgian game. But will it be just you or will the others get to play too? Let's find out. <laughs> It's an all-play silly game, so that means it's off down the time sewer with a lot of you. Lead them off, Emily. Oh, what an interesting entrance that was. <laughs> Head first. Uh... <laughs> and there we go. Now, Georgian people famously love to wear wigs. The bigger, the better. The only problem was that most of the wigs were alive with bugs. It's time to play Flea Fling. Loads of fleas and lice will be flinging themselves from a giant Georgian wig. You have to catch as many bugs in your hairnet as possible. The player who catches the most wins the year sphere. Are you ready? Let the flea flinging begin. So here we go with the Georgian flea fling. And here come the bugs and the lice and the creepy crawlies and the tiny little things that scurry around in your scalp. Rattus, you must have a few of these running around on your body even as we speak. I certainly do, Dave, but I have to say I'm quite happy they pay their rent on time and they don't annoy the neighbours. Good for them. Like to hear about upstanding bugs. What do you feel, Rattus? Do you think maybe planting yourself in one position might be the trick to this game? That would be foolhardy, I think, because the, the, the fleas and the lice are less likely to jump in the same position. Well, our contestants certainly all moving oh, about quite a lot. And as if to prove my point, there they are. You see they're coming from the left and from the right, and the left again, then the right, then the middle, then the left and the right, and the kids are all over the place. Oh, lovely knee slide there from Lucas. What a terrific catch that was. Sliding on his knees like some sort of celebrating footballer. But I fear that may turn out to be a consolation for him because Emily is a long way out in front at the moment, and there's the hooter. And look at that. Emily's got an absolute netful. Welcome back, gamers. <laughs> wow, that was superb. Emily, help yourself to a year sphere. All posh Georgians wore wigs, but Georgian women's wigs could be enormous, and some of them contained real fruit as decoration. Oh, I all too often have real fruit in my hair. It's a basic hazard of rooting through bins. Moving swiftly on, I think. Over to the gory grid to find out what's up next. It's the measly Middle Ages. Here are your four Middle Ages topics. Crime, the plague, toads and monks. Emily, it's your turn to pick first in this round. What are you going to pick? Crime. Crime. In 1317, a traveller was robbed of £200 whilst journeying to London. But what was unusual about the robbers? A, they were dressed as chickens. B, they were children. Or C, they were monks. Lovely. The girl's agreeing on C. Lucas on his own with B. Let's find out who's right. 
The answer is C. They were all monks. Mm. The first but not the last criminals to wear hoodies. OK, Mia, it's your turn to choose a topic. The play. The plague. The terrible disease, the bubonic plague, arrived in Britain in 1348. But what did we call it? A, the devil's spit, B, the black death, or C, the man flu? Yes, you've all agreed anyway. Let's see if you're all right or all wrong. The answer is B. We called it the black death because of the dark blotches it made on a victim's skin. No, no, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> She's very far from fine. <laughs> but your performances were very fine, because you all had a point in that round. Lucas, it's your turn to pick a topic. I'm going to go with monks. The monks? How did monks keep the bald patch in the middle of their heads? A, they polished it with a piece of rock, or B, they would burn it off with molten wax, or C, they had it grazed by a miniature sheep. OK, Mia and Emily agreeing on A. Lucas again, out on his own with C. Let's see who's right. The answer is A. They polished it with a pumice stone, a sort of volcanic rock. Is that what you use, Dave? Or do you have a miniature sheep in your pocket? <laughs> I have a miniature sheep. <clears throat> I find it works for me. Mia and Emily, you are on three points each. There's only one question left in this round. It's on toads, and it is a prop question. Ooh, goody! There is the prop. You'll have to trust me, there's a toad in that bag. A dried toad in the bag, worn around the neck, was a Middle Ages cure for what? Was it A, bleeding inside the body, B, sleeplessness, or C, warts? OK. Mia and Lucas have gone for C. Emily has gone for B. The answer is A. Bleeding inside the body. No points scored in that particular game. That means that at the end of that round, Mia and Emily are in a tie-break situation. Lucas, for now, your history, but you've already got three spheres, so that shouldn't trouble you unduly. Mia and Emily, let's get those fingers on the buzzers. Beginning with the letter J, what word is the name of the contest in which two medieval knights on horses... <laughs> Mia. Jousting. Jousting is absolutely right, Mia. Well done. You've won yourself your first year sphere. Come and collect it. So, Mia, you're through to play the Victorian game, but will it be an all-play or a single-player game? Let's find out right now. It's an all-play gory game, so that means it's off down the time sewer with a lot of you. Lead us off, Emily. What a lovely entrance that was. There goes Lucas. Orthodox. It blows! And Mia thinks it stinks. Now then, William the Conqueror was a huge bully, so not many people were upset when his funeral didn't go according to plan. His servants stole his treasure and the church burned down. It's time to play Yakaroo. You are William's servants, and your challenge is to take his treasure and put it in your chest. All the treasure is colour-coded, and you must only take your own colour. Whoever collects the most pieces wins the year sphere, and you'd better be quick, because the church is going to burn down. Your time starts now. So off we go with Yakaroo. It's interesting, both girls have gone straight for the candlestick. There's a good twisting action there, isn't there, Rettus? Excellent twisting action there, Dave. Absolutely. You want to be going counterclockwise, of course. Emily wins the twist-off. And late to the party is Lucas. The twist-off's over, Lucas. It's all over. And you've come third on this occasion. Should just say that stealing is, of course, bad. Remember that, everyone. Everybody's now got a candlestick. I suppose they're quite easy to sell on, aren't they, Rattus? I think they probably are, Dave. Everybody likes a good candlestick, particularly if you've got a lot of candles. Yeah, absolutely. And once it's appeared on TV, that's only going to increase its value. And, in fact, if you couldn't sell it as a candlestick, you could melt it down and fashion it into a bracelet, a brooch, or buckles for your shoes. Indeed, a trinket of your choice. This certainly is quite a quiet and slow game. I wish there was something we'd thought of to spice this game. Up. Like that! Oh, and the guts have gone. <laughs> William the Conqueror's <laughs> belly has exploded there, and Mia copped for quite a lot of that. I have to say, Lucas didn't bat an eyelid. He's just carried on fiddling with his goblet there. And oh, he's, and he's got done it. it. He's done it. He's well got the goblet. Done. Very good work there from Lucas. 
30 seconds remaining. And we're just 30 seconds remaining now. It is actually very, very close indeed. This has rather crept up on us, Rattus, but it's very tight at the top. Me, a fractionally ahead at this point, but people thieving things left, right and centre. They're just flying out of the tomb of William the Conqueror now, these treasures. Oh, and there's the fire. The church is now on fire, so the competition is drawing to a close. They really need to steal these last few pieces. There's a last-minute piece going in from Emily there. Is it too little too late, though? I rather Time's think it up. might be. Yes, it's all over, and Mia has just about edged it. Welcome back, gamers. Back behind those podiums for me. I thought you all did extremely well there. I want to talk about the moment that William the Conqueror's stomach exploded. How did it make you feel, Mia? Well, it went on my hand. I went, ew! Keep going, keep going. <laughs> Lucas, however, reacted very, very differently. I didn't even flinch because it just didn't even touch me. You didn't even look up from your work. And Emily, how did you react? What happened to you <laughs> well, at that moment? I just ran away, but I didn't get much on me. But I just, you know. That was brilliant. It was so exciting. I can tell you, tied with five were Lucas and Emily. With six, our winner was Mia. Help yourself to another year, Sphere Mia. All that blood on your arm was worth it. <laughs> Lovely. Time for the final round. Over to the gory grid one last time to find out who we've got. It's the vile Victorians. Good day. No quirky quiz, of course, in our final round. It's straight to our big all-play game. Everyone, get down that time sewer. What a scary one we've got for you all. Ladies first. <laughs> what an absolute gentleman. Hard to believe, but grave robbers would steal dead bodies to sell to surgeons keen to experiment on corpses to learn how the human body works. It's time to play Grave Robbers. You are a rotten robber. Your challenge? To steal three bodies from the graveyard, get them through the railings, onto the carts, find the key to the cemetery gate and get them onto the surgeon's table. If you hear this noise, <whistles> then you must rush back to the cemetery and hide so the policeman doesn't spot you. A second whistle means you can go again. The first person to get all their bodies to the surgeon's table and grab their dodgy money is the winner. Three, two, one. <laughs> so off go the grave robbers. And there they go. Leg first option being taken very nicely there by Emily. Uh, look out. Look at Lucas's technique here. He seems to be trying to get a piggyback off the body there. Well, that's an extraordinary technique, it's isn't it? It is extraordinary, Dave. Quite, quite remarkable, but it's worked for him. He's managed to get the corpse through the fence there, and Mia struggling away as well, of course. But there's Emily working away with the key. Look at the cobwebs on there. How many spiders do you think it's taken to get all those cobwebs on there, Rex? Uh, just the one. He's very industrious. I'll say he is. He's been working overtime and then some. Emily brings the whole trolley through, and so now she doesn't need to do that. It won't. She won't get penalised for doing it, but it is wasting a lot of her time. And it has meant that Lucas has been able to overtake her. Well, that could be vital later on. Mia, however, can't find her key. Dear, oh dear. The others carrying on bravely. Lucas is having a dance with his corpse. Interesting. Mia still struggling. It's on the end of that chain, which you can just see coming out of the pocket there. Emily, not troubled with any of that. Oh, look at this. I'm a bit worried about Mia here. Lucas has now the dance is over and he's started kicking him through the fence, which I think is a much better option. Oh, look out. A corpse has fallen off Emily's trolley, but she's quickly put that back on and now here's the policeman. Everybody's got to get back quick. Get back, get out of sight and keep very, very quiet. And here comes the bobby now. Here comes the shifty-looking peeler. He's trying to arrest our three grave robbers, but I have to say he's not particularly observant. Not only has he missed the grave robbers, but he seems not to have spotted the corpses, which are littering the floor around him. You can come out now, and here they come, and they're straight back into it. And they can continue with their grave robbing, which is good news for us. There's the second corpse being delivered by... Emily. She's really in the lead. Now, Mia, really, the key is on the end of that chain, which you've had in your hand for quite some time now. You really do need to look closely at the end of that chain. Two bodies now for Lucas. He's a little behind, but he's still in this. Emily very, very much in the lead. That's her final corpse being dragged through the railings right now. Lucas catching up to her, but still a little way behind. 
This is very good. It's looking excellent for Emily. It's looking hopeless for Mia, who simply can't see the key, which we can all see right in front of her face. Oh, she's going to be furious when she watches this back. Oh, it's a foregone conclusion now. Emily has delivered the third, but wait a minute. She's just going to pick that bag of money up. Oh, she thinks she's going to undo the knot. This could be a catastrophic misunderstanding of the rules of Emily because Lucas is right behind her. He's just going to pick that bag up. That's what he's meant to do. Pick the bag up. He's done it. All he's got to do is go through the railings and he's won it. And too late, Emily realises her mistake. It's too late because Lucas has beaten her by a whisker. And there he is, the greatest grave robber in town. Welcome back, <laughs> Lucas. Help yourself to another year sphere. <laughs> what did you think, Emily? Did you think you'd won it? The string was attached to the bag, and I tried to undo the string. Yes. But you had to take it off the hook. And when Lucas took it off the hook, I was like, oh, right, take it off the hook. I'll take it off the hook. <laughs> hey, Dave, Dave, what did one corpse say to the other? I don't know. What did one corpse say to the other? <laughs> Nothing. It was dead. Keep up. <laughs> Time to count up those year spheres. And remember, AD years are added to your total and BC years are subtracted from it. So, Mia, let's see what you've got in those spheres. 1587 AD. The execution of Mary, Queen of Scots. 78 AD. The Romans conquered Wales. Mia, you have a total of 1,665 points. That's what you've got to beat, Lucas. Let's see what's in your first sphere. 1867 AD. The invention of antiseptic for surgery that year. 305 BC. Alexander the Great conquered Egypt that year, so that's a negative score. Let's have a look at the third one. 1438 AD. The Incan Empire began in Peru. 1792 A.D. Gas lighting was invented. That means you have an excellent total of 4,792. Emily, I don't think you can beat that, but let's have a look. It's 1086 A.D. The Doomsday Book was completed that year. That means that today's winner, with a total of 4,792 points, is Lucas. Yes. And he goes home with our star prize, which promises to be simply amazing, but then breaks its promise and turns out to be some old rubbish fished out of the time sewer by my good colleague, Rattus. Well, I think you'll agree that finding this prize was a truly incredible feat. Or rather, a truly incredible foot. Yes, it's that Roman delicacy, a roast camel foot. <laughs> Who in their right mind would want a camel's foot? Well, I reckon the camel wouldn't mind it back. <laughs> Congratulations, Lucas! Yes, well done, Lucas. I'm so sorry, it's so weird. Oh, it's fine. Are you happy with it? Yeah. Well, it just remains for me to say thanks to our winner, Lucas, and thanks also to our magnificent runners-up, Mia and Emily, and no thanks whatsoever to Rattus. My absolute pleasure. You've been watching Gory Games. Goodbye. Was that show messy enough for you? Or would you have preferred a little more poo? Have you had your fill of blood, guts and gore? Or have we left you still wanting more? We'll keep watching. We'll be back again. With Horrible History's Gory Games. Horrible History's Gory Games. CBBC, the incredibly spooky and scary young Dracula is coming up next, but it's not half as spooky and scary as what's going on in the CBBC office right now because... There's a Graslax on the loose! You know the little vicious blue monsters from Wizards vs. Aliens, Chris? They're everywhere! Pesky Graslax! I know them all too well, but don't worry, mate. The situation is under control, all thanks to our magical friend, Ben! Yeah, cheers, Ben. You're not welcome. Think about it. Ben's a wizard, so we'll lure the Graslax out, it'll have a nibble, and we can either catch it or escape. I'll judge yeah. the situation as it comes. Look, on the right, day. This has yeah. gone too far. I'm not a wizard, I'm a magician, and I'm not Graslax bait, OK? Just same get... thing, Benjamin, same thing! It's not the same thing. I'm a magician. That means I do magic tricks. That's it. Woo! Oh, do... Woo now! Have you had a thought? New plan! 
All right, magic tricks yeah. are magic. It'll lure the guys like out. Awesome. Yeah. Benjamin, what? it's time for this. <laughs> And behaving magically. Nope. Nah, here we are. Yeah, uh, sorry about the whole yeah. uh, tie to the chair thing. <laughs> Alright, should we try this then? Yes. <laughs> Alright, good job. I've got some of these deck of cards. Do us a favor, yonks. Reach in, grab a card for me, mate. Grab one. Take grab one. a card in the yeah. yard. Always wanted to say that. Alright, All right. let's go for uh, that one. Show those guys as well. Show those guys. We got there. Everybody oh. seen it? All right, here, give it back, give it back. What I watch. See, if I take his card, right, if I yeah. stick it about into the middle of the deck like that, mm -hmm. I'm going to try and find your card without touching the deck. <laughs> That's impossible, mate. You've got to, like, search through it to find it, haven't you? Max, watch, watch. Whoa. Watch, watch. Whoa. Look, look, it's going back. <laughs> look at that. Wait, wait, oh, watch. Oh. 